Now, Mauritius can be described as a post-resources economy in Africa, having diversified its economy away from being sugar-based to new drivers of growth that include financial services, offshore finance, banking, and tourism. Over two-thirds of its economy is now service-driven. Joining us now for more is James Binoa, the CEO of uh, Afresia Bank. James, thanks for your time. Thanks Thank again you. for coming through Johannesburg. You're finding it really easy mm. to come back into Africa more often. All the time. Is it opportunities? Is it deals? Yeah. What are you coming to see? Uh, yeah, it is deals. We're looking at a few other acquisitions uh, in, the, in the region, um, doing a lot of uh, networking with clients and basically raising capital, uh, helping clients raise capital to expand across the continent. So I'm getting back here uh, every other month now. Is it busy for you? Uh, it's busy. Yeah, I've had to hire more team to do that, so I can't do it all myself. So we're ramping up the team yeah. uh, and they're traveling into Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, doing that work uh, as well. So it's good. You're not mentioning West Africa? Uh, you know, for Mauritius, we're being strategic. You know, we're focusing on Comesa, Sadiq, Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. We'll get there at some stage, but yeah. I think there's more natural links uh, on this side of the continent. What are you looking for? What are you looking at? Uh, banks, uh, corporate finance, asset management. And there's huge demand for sovereign debt, yeah. huge demand for the yield that Africa has, uh, trade finance. So a lot of corporate lending, private banking, uh, helping clients do business uh, yeah. in Africa. Let's talk about the trade finance. What exactly are you finding? Where is the demand? Well, there's a lot of commodity shipments still going out yeah. to China, yeah. uh, a lot of other uh, Indian demand as well. So you know, quite active in, in shipping, obviously, all the, uh, the commodities which uh, Africa produces. So still yeah. quite strong, even though it's been subdued yeah. a bit from the Far East lately. Now, in terms of uh, that uh, foray into Africa, what are you doing? Are you coming in and setting up shop? We know we set up yeah. in Zimbabwe. It was a partnership with our Kingdom Bank. What's the strategy there? Is it acquiring? Is it partnering with locals? What is it? Yeah. It's, partnering. it's partnering. It is partnering. Uh, depending on what their want is as well. Some people do want want to exit if it's a family-owned bank or yeah. they may want to exit in time. So we're looking at having operating capabilities, balance sheet capabilities yeah. in strategic countries. So for the corporates coming into the region that they're able to have you know, a full range of, of banking solutions on yeah. the ground in those markets. Yeah. Talk to us about Zimbabwe because that was an interesting right. time that you mm. went in there because things were not as settled as they are now mm. well, in, in relative <laughs> terms in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Certainly then it was yeah. far perhaps more uh, riskier than it is now. Mm. How have you found, how has been the experience? You know, it's still fragile. There's still challenges sometimes with liquidity, but we seem to see that it's getting more stable in terms of outlook. Yeah. Uh, the investor perception that I'm finding uh, in London, yeah. uh, in Europe, yeah. Uh, coming through Mauritius is all, all, all good. Everyone's expecting things to uh, normalize, stabilize there, and so the actual outside world uh, is going through a re-rating perception, I think. And so in terms of the business environment, in terms of actual business coming through the bank? Yes, um, we're seeing big, uh, big demand from Indian corporates doing projects in Zimbabwe, and they're using Mauritius as a structuring vehicle. What kind of projects are they looking for? Uh, they're looking at uh, commodities, uh, yeah. refineries, uh, factories, uh, same coming out of China as well, obviously. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's wide-ranging, China and India. Yeah, I joke with my friends. The last time I was there, I remember driving up to Harare, and I, I remember joking with a friend of mine that actually Zimbabwean cars were overtaking me. <laughs> now, of course, that precedes the years when mm. we, there was no fuel there, mm. and everybody was driving at 30, 40 kilometers an hour. But in addition to that, just looking at the level of volumes of traffic on the mm. roads, including trucks and that kind of thing. Mm. You generally get that sense that this economy is ramping up. You get that impression that it's, it's busier, um, mm. busier than people think when you get there and you mm. see quite smart restaurants and shops going up, shopping centers. So, mm. you know, it's moving. Uh, definitely, you can feel that. Yeah. Let's talk about the, 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 the position of Mauritius as a conduit, if you like, for fans that mm. are looking at Africa. Mm. Just how does that work? Explain for us. Well, obviously, Mercedes has many investor protection agreements. It's got tax treaties, but it's also a very stable regime, and it has access to lots of foreign currency. So in terms of providing an overall you know, capital solution yeah. combined with advisory, and we use Mauritius in conjunction with our operations yeah. here in South Africa, so we can help people do a lot of things yeah. uh, across the continent. So Mercedes is just a very, it's a good capital haven, a good place to do logistics and financing for projects uh, yeah. across the continent. Are you sitting with a lot of money from the East that's looking to find its way into Africa? How much money? Um, it's increasing. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still only 50% uh, lent out of our foreign currency deposits. We do have a lot of funds coming in from Europe, right. uh, from Asia, and okay. uh, you know they are making those investments select steadily yeah. uh, into, into East Africa. And if you were to compare Europe, Asia, and maybe mm. break down Asia between uh, India and China, what number? What, what does the picture China's look like? China is still much bigger, but we can see the Indian, uh, you know, component looking at it much more now. SR Group is making major investments in Zimbabwe. That's no state secret. Sure. I can mention that. So yeah. India, yeah. I think, has been a bit lagging, and obviously their economy has had its own slumps. But we are we are seeing 
uh, Indian corporates, whether it's cement and other commodities now, you know, doing things uh, in in, uh, in Africa. Yeah. What about Mauritius itself as a mm. business, way, as, as, as a place to do business? How is that economy? I mean, we know, yes. I mean, I was reading those numbers about mm. the fact that this economy is now two-thirds services. Mm. Mm. It is. I think you have to look at Mauritius as a place to do business from. It's only 1.3 mm. million people. Mm. So to come there as an end market in its own right is perhaps a bit crowded. But if you are incubating and uh, using that as a regional platform, yeah. uh, and it's very, it's, it's a very uh, effective, very efficient, very pleasant pleasant business environment to, to, to do regional trade. Yeah, but in terms of the business environment, sorry, in terms of the business yeah. actually taking place inside Mauritius itself and uh, mm. prospects for that economy right. on its own, how does that look? It's subdued right now mainly because we're still orienting our tourist market away from Europe into Asia and also just generally trade flows have, have subdued around, around the world. So it's yeah. a bit subdued. But as the African trade continues to pick up, yeah. that creates an infrastructure spin-off and people you know, settling in Mauritius spin off So in another year, I think the economy will be back at a pretty good recovery. But even then, it's still going to grow at 3 or 4% yeah. uh, this year. Let me bring you to your presence in Africa. I mean, yes, so we spoke about Zimbabwe. What about on the eastern side? Because we've seen quite a few discoveries mm -hmm. of natural resources and that kind of thing. What role yes. are you playing there? We are doing a lot of trade finance and project finance in Mozambique, Tanzania, uh, Kenya. We are looking to set up operations in one or two or three of those countries in the next uh, 12 months. So we want okay. to have uh, some balance sheet and, and banking capabilities on the ground in, in a yeah. variety of those yeah. countries.